Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Yes Prep Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the part, uh, panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening today, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions later this morning. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. Now we are a little light on presenters right at the top of the hour. Um, so we are here in session A2. We may be going slightly out of order as our presenters join us, but I'll be sure to announce where we are at as we go through that. And I just want to make uh, one final reminder to our panelists to please mute yourselves and take yourselves off video when you are not presenting, and that each uh, institution will have six minutes to present. So I don't want to take any more of your time. So we'll kick things off and hear from Prairie View a and University first. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jonathan McKissick and I serve as one of the university recruiters with Prairie View Enemy University right outside of Houston in the Houston area for all my Yes Prep students and staff. Um, and also serve as a campus engagement coordinator. So I'm also over our welcome centers, our is all of our campus tours and campus visits. So I'll go ahead and get ready to share my screen. And we always uh, see. Awesome. It should be loading right now. So I was like to try to get some, you know, a little bit of music to kind of get your morning going, get you excited. Um, so this is the famous Jill Scott, if you don't keep up with it too at the beginning. So we're gonna start with first our QR code. So if you have your phone on you, Definitely whip it out right now and scan one of our QR codes as well as follow us on our social media. Uh, this will give you the opportunity to see all of our brochures electronically. Um, as soon as you scan the freshman brochure, it will ask for your contact information. And that's just so we can follow up with you at the end of, at the conclusion of our session today. Um, and once you scan it, you'll see all of our admission requirements, everything that we'll cover this morning with, uh, instead of, you know, you can take a little bit longer than six minutes to review the information. So. Definitely go ahead and scan that. Um, you'll be able to see it again at the end of the presentation. Um, next, we'll go into what is PV. So we opened up in 1876 for the second oldest institution um, of higher education in the state of Texas. We have over 9,500 students in row. Uh, we're going to have a smaller class and ratio. It's actually going to be smaller for the 18 to 1 due to the COVID pandemic. Um, so we're going to be looking at 12 to 1 student teacher ratio right now. And our current president is Dr. Ruth Simmons. Uh, she's phenomenal. She's actually the first. African-American female of the institution's history. So we've been open for over 140 years. It's 144 to be exact. Um, and these are gonna be all of our academic colleges and majors. So we have eight different disciplines that you can choose from, ranging from agriculture to architecture, to business, engineering, education, nursing as well too, and juvenile justice psychology. And so we have 45 majors. Um, within these majors, you have different concentrations that you can also focus in as well. So if you're interested in going to pre-med, you would actually be a biology major with a pre-med concentration track as well. But in addition to all of our colleges and majors, we do have certain programs that are gonna be for our stellar students. So we have our honors program as well. Um, let me see if I can minimize this. So we can see a little bit better. So that's gonna be applicant criteria for our honors program. Um, if you meet these minimum requirements, that also going to help you eligible for one of our merit scholarships that we'll cover here in just a second. Um, and so you have to be admitted um, to Prairie View before you can actually apply for the honors program. Similar scenario for any of our students that are interested in the biology or any of the pre-medical science uh, fields as well. Uh, we have our undergraduate medical academy, the UMA. And so students that are coming out of high school, they're considered Jasper scholars. So we do have a transfer program as well too. Um, and it's gonna be similar if you meet those requirements that does make you eligible for one of our merit scholarships as well. And you have to, get, have to be admitted to the institution before you can apply for to attend the undergraduate medical academy as well. Okay, uh, we do have the March and Storm. Um, so it's the largest, one of the hardest working organizations on our campus. Um, if, you, if, you ever, if you haven't been to HBCU, HBCUs are known for their band. And so if you're interested, you play an instrument currently, you want to continue that, 
um, into your collegiate career. Uh, we definitely have the contact information here as well. Um, our band has over 425 members, so it's a very, very large organization on campus. And they also get the opportunity of doing a lot of recruitment. They also get to do a lot of networking because they do a lot of traveling as well. Then our student life. So we want you to get engaged, get involved, and find support when you're here on the Hill. Um, and so these are going to be all of our various areas from our parent and family programming. Because we know students don't, can't do this alone. So not only do we want to make sure that you are involved as a student, but as well as our parents. Um, if anybody has any disabilities, our housing, or res life, our career services. So we have everything that you need to help you be equipped and having a great experience at Prairie View. Here's gonna be a little video for our athletics. Dear Prairie View, the pain we felt was preparation for our purpose. The time we gave was lightning for the storm. The hill became our home. It became our passage to victory. There will be no retribution without sacrifice. There will be no pride without fight. We stand on the shoulders of giants and will build a future for our future. We will welcome the late nights. We will depart from fear. We will not descend and fall or tilt because this is where champions are built. This kind of gives you a little little bit of snapshot of our athletics. So we do, we're part of Division One. Uh, we have uh, 16 total athletic sports to choose from. We do offer scholarships because we are Division One, and we're sponsored by Adidas. And this is going to give you a little snapshots of our housing and rest life for our incoming freshman students. So you can kind of take a look at those. It's, um, it's going to be a two, two people to a room. And it's like the um, kind of gathering area as well as the outside. And this is the actual floor plan as well. And this is the leasing housing checklist. So um, you can actually apply for housing uh, before you get admitted. So long as you apply to the institution, um, then you can go ahead and apply for the, uh, for the housing as well too. And we can cover housing a little bit later in the Q&A. Um, this is gonna be the mission, uh, mission requirements that we require. So high school transcript, as well as your test scores as well. And, um, and we're not waiving the AC or SAT currently. Uh, 2.8 high school GPA, 15 ACT, or an 800 on the SAT as well. So I want to thank you all again for the time. Um, if, you, if there's anything I didn't get a chance to cover, uh, feel free to ask, to ask in the Q&A. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. So our next presenter, we're actually going to jump to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I wanna remind uh, our students again that you can ask questions in the Q&A throughout and then we should have a few moments at the end of the session as well. So go ahead, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. See, you're muted. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I am uh, trying to make sure that I get everything uh, correct here today, but I'm from the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. And today I just wanna take time to share with you a few things uh, from uh, our university. We are a, uh, a four-year institution. We have roughly about 3,000 students on our campus, but I do have a, a video here that I'm going to share with you guys uh, here from our uh, here from our, our uh, school. So give me just one second and I'll go in and I will, uh, I will make that video happen. Okay, do you guys see, uh, do you guys see our video up? Oh. Cool beans, I'm gonna go ahead and, and start it then. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride.
in now. We're going to continue on. Um, that's a, a quick commercial that we air for our students so they can see that we are a very inclusive university. We also make sure that our students are taken care of on our campus. Uh, our next slide is a copy of, or a slide of our recruitment team, Mr. Sam Watson, who is on with me today. Also, Mr. Josh Strong, who is our webmaster, myself, along with Ms. Amanda Kirkland, who takes care of our scholarships, and Ms. Kanita McKenzie, who also schedules our tours, and she also helps to put together our events that we have on campus. Uh, we want you to meet our recruitment team because it is vital to our um, our connection with our students because we always talk about having a personal touch. So we want to make sure that we personalize what we do for our students on our campus. The only uh, photograph that you do not see is that of Ms. Donna Riles, who is our director of recruitment. However, she is an awesome and vital portion of our recruitment team as well, being that she makes sure that she shapes our budget and, to have those scholarships available so that you guys can come to campus. Uh, quick facts about UAPB. We were founded in 1873. We are the oldest HBCU in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we are roughly about 148 years old. We have 45 degree programs, 30 bachelor's, nine master's, one PhD, and seven associate degrees. Our student teacher ratio is one in 16, one in 18, but because of COVID right now, it's a little bit lower than that. It's probably um, one in 10, one in 12 right now, because some students have the option of going online or hybrid. Uh, we have 14 Division I athletic programs on our campus as well, and our female to male ratio is 52 to 48. So that's another uh, great thing about our campus. Our scholarships, uh, as you can see, our scholarships are very diverse. You can have a 17 on the ACT or 980 on the SAT with a 2.75, and then it goes all the way up to a, a 3.75 or above to a 28 on the ACT or above, a 1310 on the SAT. This qualifies you for our chancellors, our, our largest scholarship that we have on campus. It basically covers your tuition up to 15 hours, room and board, as well as some of your fees. Uh, our dean's tuition scholarship basically covers your tuition for four years. So you have a lot of options on our campus and you can also receive a Golden Line campus. Those are smaller scholarships, but we have other scholarships. You just have to meet criteria. And although we are going to be test optional uh, this coming season, for an entrance to UAPB, which means that, you know, you can just use your grade point average to become admitted to our university. However, we will need your test scores for scholarships because those are very competitive. Our service-based scholarships are athletics, band, choir, cheer, and ROTC. And what takes place with those scholarships, if you are a member of the band, we have Marching Musical Machine of the Mid-South, um, band. If you can audition for Mr. Graham, Mr. Fuster, or Mr. Evans, one of our band directors, you can receive a scholarship on the spot. Our choir is our Vesper Choir. They're world renowned. They've traveled to Italy and Spain. Uh, Mr. Jerron Liddell is, oversees that program, and he does an awesome job with those students, and they do travel as well. But we have our cheer uh, spirit team program uh, led by Ms. Blunt. We have three cheer squads on our campus, but we also have military science. So if you're interested in coming to school, but you want a career and be a commission officer after you graduate, military science offers scholarships on our campus, starting with a 19 on the ACT or above, as well as a 2.5 grade point average. And they pay for everything, room and board, tuition, as well as, um, as, well as other things. Uh, before we go, I want you to see the cost of, to attend our university. Our university is one of the uh, most affordable in the state of Arkansas, as well as outside of the state of Arkansas. So please take a look at that and screenshot this, that slide as well. If you want to contact us, please go to uapb.edu or call us at 800-264-UAPB, 1-800-264-8272, or go to our social media page. You can go to Facebook, UAPB, Officer Recruitment, Twitter, UAPB, or Instagram. So thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Great, thank you. And we have our representative from Jackson State University up next.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing this morning? All right, my name is Chad Thomas. I'm one of the recruiters and admission counselor here at Jackson State University. And this morning, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Jackson State and what it takes to get into JSU and some of the exciting things that we had to offer here at Jackson State University. Um, I'm going to share my screen. All right, Jackson State University is located in Jackson, Mississippi, which is the capital city of Mississippi. Um, we're, we're one of your largest HBCUs in the nation. Uh, we're ranked number five in the country. Um, also, we're ranked number 16 out of top HBCUs in the nation as well um, here at Jackson State University. We offer a variety of different majors for our students. We have over 45 undergraduate degree majors that they can major in here at Jackson State University. Um, for my athletes, we are a Division I school. We're in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, um, so we are a Division I school as well. Um, what separates Jackson State University from a lot of other schools is not about you coming to JSU, it's about you coming here and leaving with a degree here from Jackson State University. Uh, so we pride ourselves on that. Um, we want to make sure that you leave here with a degree. Uh, become what you are meant to be when you come to Jackson State University. Um, what does it take to get in? Jackson State University, we look at what we call the college prep curriculum, which is known as the CPC. Um, so those are your main courses that you take when you're in high school. Um, such as your English, your math, your sciences, your foreign languages. Um, those are the different courses that we evaluate when we're looking at your CPC. Even though we're, we're moving like towards test optional to get admitted, but to, to gain full admissions, we still are looking at, uh, if you have taken the ACT and the SAT, we still want you to submit those test scores. Or when you have the opportunity to do so, we still want you to submit those test scores when you get the chance. But if you haven't taken the test to gain full admissions, if you have a 3.2 or higher GPA, we waive the ACT or SAT score regardless of whatever it may be. So you can gain full admission with having a 3.2 or higher GPA, okay? Next, um, if you have a 2.5 GPA with a 16 or higher on the ACT, um, you can be admitted that way. Equivalent to that on the SAT is going to be between an 890 and a 910 on the SAT, just to let you know. Um, or if you finish in the top 50% of your class, you can be admitted that way as well, okay? Um, also, uh, if you have a C C, uh, CPC GPA of a 2.0 or higher GPA with an 18 or higher, then you can be admitted that way as well. Uh, but as you can tell, the lower your GPA, the higher you have to make on the ACT or the SAT, or vice versa. The, the higher your GPA, the lower you can make on your ACT or your SAT. Now, um, the fourth way you can be admitted is being an NSA qualifier, and that's like a 2.5 with a 17. Um, if you have a 2.5 with a 17, um, then you can be admitted that way as well, and that's being an NSA qualifier. So those are the four different ways you can get admitted into JSU. Um, like I said, we are test optional. So these are the different ways that we are admitting you, uh, being that we are test optional. Uh, minimal CPC GPA over 2.0 uh, will be considered without test score. Um, the range from 2.0 to 3.19 are required to take the AccuPlacer test before enrolling. Um, and that will let us know where you stand as far as when it comes to testing. Um, like I was telling you earlier, these are it's a breakdown of the class that we're looking at that you have to have from high school, four Englishes, three mathematics, three sciences, social studies. Um, we look at advanced electives such as like if you're taking a Spanish three, um, algebra two or higher, or something in those regards, then you can get advanced elective. We also look at computer applications. Um, visual arts and performance, you get credit for that as well. Uh, we look at those courses. If you have taken those, um, just say your eighth grade year or your ninth grade, we do look at those courses as well. Applying. Um, real easy to apply. You just go to our website, jsums.edu, um, and apply directly from our website. And then also from our website, you will have the opportunity to upload your documents uh, from your portal. So you can upload your transcript and your test scores strictly from your portal. Um, you don't have to mail anything in or anything like that. You can upload them directly from your portal. That's the quickest way to apply. If you have any trouble uh, uploading your documents, you can always send those to us, email those to us at transcripts at jsums.edu 
or if you need to reach out to us, uh, the quickest way to reach out to us is going to be one eight six six one eight six six D Tigers. You can reach out to us that way. Uh, is the quickest way as far as reaching out to us um, at Jackson State University. Um, my direct email is going to be chad.l.thomas at jsums.edu. If you have any questions, need to reach out to me about anything. That's the quickest way to contact me um, as well. Uh, special admission options, um, our STARS program, which if you don't meet our admission requirements, um, is a program designed for our students that doesn't meet our requirements so they can still have the opportunity in order to attend school where you come down, you take the acupuncture test, and then you complete our, our AWE program. And once you successfully complete that AWE program, then you can be admitted to JSU just like everyone else. Through the COVID, we had to switch things up this year. Um, those students started with us in the fall, um, but generally they, that runs through the summer. Um, since we've been dealing with COVID, a uh, majority of our students have taken uh, classes online. Um, since we've been dealing with COVID. Um, so they have been taking classes online, uh, majority of our students are either doing hybrid. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. And um, some of our top five majors here at JSU are majors like Premier Biology, Engineering, Business Administration, Education, um, Social Work, um, just to name a few. So if y'all have any questions, uh, please let us know. Um, here at JSU, we believe uh, we just I'm sorry, sorry. Do you have to cut you off and move on to the next presenter? So up next is Lincoln, Un uh, Lincoln University of Missouri. Thank you. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chardonnay Abrams. I am the senior recruiter here um, for Lincoln University um, in Jefferson City, Missouri. The other Lincoln, the real one. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys and we'll get started, okay? Bear with me, I'm not really tech savvy, but we're gonna get there, okay? Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm sure you guys can see my screen. I'm going to start the presentation. So again, my name is Chardonnay Abrams. I am the Senior Admissions Coordinator here for Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. So here it gives you a timeline of Lincoln University. We were founded by the 62nd and 65th Color Infantry, and we have celebrated 150 years as of 2016. So here lets you know that we do have 35 different majors that you can choose from, with our top majors being agriculture because we are 1890 land grant and we actually just started a hemp research program. So we do have grant money and scholarships for those students that are wanting to do agriculture. We have scholarships for business, criminal justice, education, and our number three program in the state of Missouri, which is our nursing program. Here gives you a demographic of the campus. We are in phase, um, so we do have students that are on campus. So we have 22 of our students are out of state students. We have 42, which is male, and 58, which is female. And I think that our campus is very unique um, because we are um, very inclusive with our students. Um, I think that once you get out into the real world, this is the type of demographics that you'll be dealing with. So as you can see, it's 44%, which is African-American, 40%, which is Caucasian, and 12%, which is our international students. So we get a lot of international students from Ghana, and we have them coming from the islands, Jamaica, the Bahamas, different things like that. Okay, so here let you know that we have eight residential halls. Uh, we have approximately um, 338 students that are actually living on campus. We have the Divine Nine here on campus. We do have from um, SGA, which is Student Government Association, to CAB, which is Campus Activity Board. All of the different majors that we have, like journalism, like art, they all have different clubs that are associated with them, social work. We, they all have clubs with them. So here um, is our band. We do have different scholarships for our band, our auxiliaries, which is band, choir, cheerleading, dance. We do have competition choir. Um, we do have a jazz band as well. So that is Mr. Newby, and that is his contact information there. Also, we are NCAA Division II. Uh, we are um, nationally ranked as far as our track team, which we have scholarships. Um, we have football, softball, um, track and field, men's and women's golf with scholarships with those as well. So you can combine um, your academic scholarship with your um, athletic scholarship. 
So here it lets you know the criteria for you to get into Lincoln. Um, you need a 2.0 GPA. Um, as of right now, we have not decided um, for the fall if we will drop the ACT or SAT. Um, but with those scholarships, we want to make sure that you have that, um, that you'll have your ACT and SAT with your scholarships. Um, here lets you know that 90% of our students do receive um, financial aid with the in-state being 3,000. Of course, our out-of-state is six, and then room and board is another 3,000. So it kind of just all depends on where you're staying on campus, and it will kind of gauge um, the price of your room and board. Also, these are our scholarships that we do have um, that are available with you having your ACT or SAT, but we do take into consideration where you are um, and if the ACT or SAT is available in your area. Um, so we have from the curators, presidential, uh, special talent, academic special talent. We are affiliated um, with the Army, so we do have Army scholarships that are available. So I'm not quite sure if the Army is going to be waiving those ACT and SATs, but your contact person will be Mark Pratt to find out more information about that. Also, these are our um, external scholarships. So because we are a four-year HBCU, we are affiliated with Thurgood Marshall College Fund. And I believe there's about maybe eight scholarships, maybe less than that, um, that are out now that are available to students and available for students to so go ahead and start applying now. And then here's all of our contact information, um, all the way from admissions, ROTC, band, uh, cheerleading, um, and athletics. And this is how you'll stay connected with us through our social media pages. Here's my contact information. You can always reach out to me. Um, and then also you can go on to our website and apply um, to linkingu.edu. Make sure you put that U on there because you guys know it's two Lincolns, but we're the real and the only Lincoln that's out there, okay? So that is it. Um, for me, I'm going to stop sharing. And then if you guys have any questions, I will drop my contact information and all of that down in the Q&A box. And I really do appreciate it. Um, you guys inviting Lincoln of Missouri out to uh, talk to you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you to all of the presenters. Um, so unfortunately, we do not have our reps from Grambling State University or Philander Smith College. Um, if you are here, uh, either of those presenters, if you joined as participants, just give me a quick shout in the Q&A um, and I can make you presenters as well. So we do have about 15 minutes for all of your questions. So again, participants can drop your questions in the Q&A here. I'm going to invite all of our panelists to turn on their videos and then just unmute yourselves um, if there's a question directed at your university. And for participants, again, um, do just, if you have a question for a specific institution, be sure to include that in your question when you type it. All right. And panelists, if there's any questions that you've answered via a typed answer that you'd like to uh, read aloud and share with everybody on the webinar, feel free to do that as well if there's some good information in there. I know there are some students that were asking, uh, one particular asking about a rodeo team. I know that they were asking, I think it was um, directed to Prairie View, uh, but um, we in Arkansas don't have a rodeo team here, but we do have a bass fishing team. And our bass fishing team, they actually um, uh, thrive in going out um, when they uh, fish and they have won uh, a couple of tournaments doing so. So we have agriculture, aquaculture fisheries. And so they that team came out of that 
that group. So I thought that was a pretty good question because a lot of times people, we always talk about um, regular athletics, um, such as football, basketball, baseball, but we never mention those uh, outside sports of, of that nature. Um, I did see a question asking um, about the ratio. So here um, at Lincoln, the um, bigger of your classes is usually your freshman class, which is pre-COVID, which for us was about between 20 to 25 students. But of course, the further you get into your major, the smaller your classes will be. So after COVID or during COVID, um, a lot of our classes um, are smaller. So depending on the size of the room, we'll let you know the capacity of our of how many students they can hold. So most on average, our class sizes is probably between, depending on the size of class, you're probably looking at between 20 to 15 in one class, depending on the size um, of the classroom. I saw a question about walk-ons. Um, we do take uh, walk-ons. Um, but you have to contact the coaches, depending on the sport. Um, our information is on our website. Um, you just have to reach out to the coaches, um, the email addresses and also contact numbers on our website at jsums.edu. And also we do offer study abroad programs at Jackson State University. Ours is called Passport to the World, uh, where our students have the opportunity to go to places like uh, Madrid, China. Um, they've been to uh, Africa, just to name a few. And you do get college credit for those. Um, we do take those kind of trips. So. Like I said, if you need to reach out to anybody, it's going to be one eight six six DJ issue. Thank you. Um, I noticed a couple questions for Prairie View in the chat. Um, in my opinion, what I think that makes Prairie View stand out is um, we're actually part of the system. We're part of Texas A and M, uh, so we get a really, really a lot of a lot of great funding, and um, and also our location. Given the fact that we're in the metropolitan Houston area, right outside of Houston, uh, we have a lot of career opportunities for our students as well. And, um, and lastly, our campus is very beautiful. It's very large as well, too, so you'll feel really comfortable on campus. Um, and I did mention when I did my presentation, for our, we are not test optional, um, so we are requiring the SAT and the ACT for admissible purposes as well. Um, I did see a question about virtual tours. Yes, so we do have a virtual tour. So because the state of Missouri is open, um, we do have in-person tours as well as if you go to our campus website or visit our campus, uh, we do have a virtual tour which is up as well. So I did see that. And we offer virtual tours as well. You can go to you visit, type in JSU, and uh, you can get a virtual tour at Jackson State University as well know that we also at UAPB offer virtual tours as well. But I also saw um, a question in the, the chat wanting to know about study abroad programs. We do have study abroad programs. We, uh, we halted those programs due to, due to COVID-19. However, we are planning um, a study abroad this summer. So if, uh, if the uh, pandemic has been lifted, those students will uh, study abroad, but if it has not been lifted, uh, they may not. So we just have to pay attention to the CDC to see what they are saying in reference to that. But we do offer those programs, but outside of the pandemic, you know, if the pandemic is still going on, we will not uh, allow our students to travel at this time because it's not safe. So I did see a question um, that asked what makes Lincoln stand out. I think that our diversity on campus makes us stand out. And the fact that we are um, in the state capital, which gives you different resources, like if you're wanting to do criminal justice, if you're wanting to be a lawyer, we offer different internships. Um, again, so we are 1890 land grant. So if you're thinking about doing agro business, uh, we do have scholarships that are available. But I really think that our campus sets us apart from a lot of campuses because once you get out into the real world, it's not going to be one way over the other way. It's going to be a very diverse um, environment that you're going to be going into, and we prepare our students in, into that diversity um, environment. Um, I know I had a couple questions in regards to scholarships. Uh, we do offer different types of scholarships. Our most popular is going to be our merit scholarship, strictly based off of your high school GPA and your test scores. Uh, one is going to be called the full, full ride. So we actually give you a check 
uh, $600 every semester to attend school as well. We do have athletic scholarships, uh, so we're Division One. That's depending off the coach's discretion as well, too. And we also have our departmental scholarships, okay. right. depending on what your major is as well. Uh, so we do offer that as well. So I do see a question that asks, hold on, I'm sorry, it's going so fast, I'm trying to catch up. Um, so they asked that we have a football scholarship. So no, we do, it's not nothing that you need to apply for, if that makes sense. So a lot of the athletic scholarships here or our scholarships, period, you don't have to apply for them. They'll be automatically applied to your account if you qualify for that. But no, you don't have to apply or do an application for um, to get a football scholarship at Lincoln. At Jackson State University, we don't have agricultural business, but we do offer business. We do for, we do offer entrepreneurship, um, accounting, and those different areas. And our business uh, program has a six percent accreditation. I mean, has accreditation um, that only six percent of schools in the world have. And we also are accredited abroad as well too. We do offer our students uh, internships uh, with Fortune 500 companies, so you can add that to your portfolio and also to your resume, so you can have some kind of work experience while you're in school as well. I know at UAPB, we do offer agricultural business. We have a, a whole agriculture department, but we also, in our business department, we offer uh, other degrees as well. We right now are partnering with uh, the new casino that's going to be the largest in, in the state of Arkansas, the Saracen Casino. And so they are utilizing a lot of our business students, as well as some of our uh, recent graduates in order to work uh, for the casino. So we do have a, a hotel restaurant management program as well. That's also through our business and agriculture culture department that also facilitates that. So we have a, a, a wonderful program. We would love for you guys to call and inquire more about it. So here at Lincoln, because we are an 1890 land grant institution, um, we do partner up with the USDA. Um, we actually just gave out about 20 full ride scholarships for students that are wanting to do um, agriculture, agro-business, animal science, um, and different things like that. So we do have scholarship money that is out there and is available for students that are wanting to do that. And we actually, like I stated, we actually just started a hemp program or a hemp research program um, here at Lincoln with internships available, with stipends available as well. Yes, I did say hemp. I, I did. I saw some some people, I, you know, yes. I saw my eyes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> So the best way to defer costs with college is going to be um, trying to see what scholarships, uh, whatever school you may choose, have available. Um, and that will help out with costs. Also financial aid um, if you're trying to pay for school. But scholarships are going to be the best way, whether that's in-house or if you apply uh, for several different scholarships in your area, uh, local companies, uh, you'll be surprised uh, that, that the number of scholarships that are out there that students don't apply for and that's there to help to pay for school. So please apply, apply, apply. Um, a lot of scholarship deadlines um, are approaching really fast. Some of them by December. Ours is February the 15th, um, but make sure you apply to any scholarship that you may be eligible for. I saw a question uh, also in the chat in reference to students with disabilities. We do have a uh, disability and veteran affairs office here on our campus. Uh, those two work um, hand in hand. Uh, Mr. Bumpers uh, oversees that program for our students with disabilities. You just need to make sure that you notify him. And we also have a student success office. So those students that do have those disabilities, once they submit their information and paperwork, the university will work with them to see how can they assist uh, these particular students that have uh, the different disabilities. And we have the same program here at Lincoln as well. It's called Access and Abilities. So um, his name is Greg Holtmeyer. He works, works really, really closely uh, with our students to make sure that they do get those accommodations. Um, we do have counseling services as well, which is free to students. We do have tutoring services, which is free to students um, as well. Um, we, I do see a, a question in chat in regards to financial aid for undocumented students. Um, so I know a lot of our HBC family will want to touch on this. Um, we have Prairie View, we do offer financial aid, it's called the Task Food. Um, ours right now is going to be actually a paper form, so we do need that, undoc if you are an undocumented student, 
Uh, you just get in contact with our financial aid office and we'll be able to email that form to you and be able to email it back as well. Yeah, JSU, you just have to uh, talk to financial aid about that um, if you require um, federal financial aid and go from there. Um, that's the best way for that. We too do have uh, some scholarships that will allow us to uh, give money to those students that are not documented. However, going through financial aid um, as well is another way to see what you can be offered and then what, what will be covered for those students that are not documented. Yes, and that will be the same for Lincoln as well. You just have to build a good relationship with financial aid, um, as well as making sure that you check out those different scholarships. Because um, I do know um, we, um, for us, we do have through our agricultural program, because it's USDA, um, which is grant money, we are available to help out students that may not have been able to get financial aid because they're undocumented. Or for our international students, we do have um, grant money set aside for those international students. So where we can assist in some way and making sure um, that those scholarships or those balances that you accumulate here at Lincoln will be covered for you guys. So I saw a question about, um, do we offer something in the entertainment industry? Uh, yes, we do. Um, it just depends on what area of entertainment you're trying to do. Uh, we have our TV station and radio station as well. Um, but if you're trying to be a young entrepreneur, uh, you might want to go into the business side of things, but we do offer those courses. Um, and also we have uh, faculty and staff to teach those courses who are in that industry as well. So uh, definitely uh, we're excited. Uh, we have Mr. Cortez Bryant, which is in the industry, which is, um, a lot, I know a lot of you students may know Lil Wayne, but he's, um, which is his manager, he's teaching a course in the industry. So it just depends on what part of the industry you're trying to get into. So we do offer those courses. I saw a question in there that um, asked about uh, requirements for athletics as well as for the band programs. And I know here at UAPB, you uh, just need to uh, uh, go out or have some film or, or send that information to our coaches or you can send them to the recruiter and we can get them to the coaches. But you need to have that for the athletic side of that. Um, they want to see you playing or they want some type of statistics about you in whatever sport it is that you are, are trying to, uh, to walk on to or trying to join. As far as band, you just simply need to audition. As I mentioned er earlier, Mr. Graham, uh, does uh, audition students, he, Mr. Fuster, and Mr. Evans, and the information, I can put it also in, in the Q&A so that you guys can have that information, or you can visit our website, but those are two areas that um, they want to see if you are trying to acquire a scholarship. They want to see how well you play sports or how well you are, um, how well of a mu musician you are so that you can get them um, funding. Um, I know a couple of students asked about um, architecture, veterinarian programs, um, excellent architectural program. Uh, we actually have the largest fabrication center in the state of Texas. Um, we grabbed the most minority architects in the nation as well, too. So that's one of our, one of our top three programs at PV. And we do have a veterinarian program through the animal science department. It's a concentration as well. Um, and we do also have our, our uh, farm. So our students get to go out and actually attend our animals as well as help with the plant soil sciences departments as well too. All right, everyone. I want to thank all, all of our presenters and participants for this first hour. Unfortunately, we are just at 45 past, so we do need to wrap things up and make sure we have time to start the next session in 15 minutes. Um, so I see there's still quite a few questions in the Q&A, um, but the presenters will get a transcript of those questions as well as all the contact info for all of the registered students, so they'll be reaching out to you um, to answer those questions for you. So again, thanks everybody for for joining us. Thank you to the presenters and participants. When you close this window, there will be a quick uh, four question survey that you'll have a link to. Any feedback that you can provide is much appreciated. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. The next one starts in about 15 minutes. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions um, at the same website where you registered. So thank you again. And I'm sure I'll see a few of you uh, within about 15 minutes. And if not, have a great rest of your day. You